Welcome back to the class on analytical beam. What is the effect of change in mechanical energy in parallel of the synchronous system? Here we are going to consider at a no load as well as a loaded condition. At no load of this. Let me take the two generators which are operating in parallel. This is sensor voltage, this is armature resistance, this is a synchronous reaction. The total is a synchronous synchronous surface of the generator. The same manner, total is a synchronous synchronous surface of the generator. The current supplied by the first generator is IA1. The current supplied by the second generator is IA2. The terminal voltage is VT. EF1 is the excitation voltage of the first generator. EF2 is the excitation voltage of the second generator. No load is nothing but we are not connected to any load here. If you see this circuit diagram from externally, EF1 equal to EF2. The phasor EF1 is parallel to the EF2. Suppose if you apply the KVL is this go, then EF1 and EF2 is opposite. If you expect to go, then it's not that. If you increase the mechanical input of generator 1, then e, EF1 leads the EF2. That is shown here. This is EF2, this is EF1. If you find the parallel sum of two vectors by means of parallel theorem, the resisting voltage, that is nothing but circulating voltage. Because of the circulating voltage, the circulating current will be passed through the two, two generators. Because we are not connected any load. The circulating current lags the circulating voltage by 90 degrees. It can neglect the armature resistance of the two generators. Now here, if you see the angle between the circulating current and EF1, that you have taken theta 1, that is less than the 90 degrees. So the synchronizing part of the first generator is equal to EF1 into IC into cos of the angle between EF1 and IC that is one. theta 1 less than 90 degrees. So the power is positive. Positive is nothing but the same, the same machine will be operating as a generator so the speed of the generator will be decreased. If we come to the second machine, the synchronizing power is equal to EF2 into IC into the angle between the IC and EF2. From this pressure that is more than 90 degrees. So the power becomes a negative. Now this machine will be operating as a motor. Nothing but uh, the speed of this machine will be increases. Whereas the speed of the first machine will be decreases. If you increase the mechanical input of a one jet. In this manner, the auto synchronization will be occurred at a no load of a parallel operated synchronization. Now we come to the loaded condition. Whenever you are seeing a loaded condition, again you are taking the two generators. 1, 2, this is prime over 1, this is prime over 2, this is the infinity bus where we are making a voltage and system is constant. From this bus we are connected to the load. The load shared by the two generators is highly depending upon the speed and load characteristics of the prime over. The prime over is the one which can give the mechanical output to the generator. Now here we have taken the, the characteristics of the prime over 1 and prime over 2 with a dotted black line. Nothing but this is the characteristic of first prime over, this is the characteristic of second prime. The total power, if you take it as a 2p, that will be taken by the load. The power taken by the first generator becomes a p, and second generator becomes a p. If we drive one horizontal dotted line, that is intersecting the first characteristic at this point, and second characteristic at this point, that is a and b. Power supplied by the first generator, this is the power supplied by the second generator, both are equal. A frequency is F. Now, whenever we are increasing the mechanical input of first generator, this characteristic will be shifted upward. That is shown with a red dotted line. That is now taken as A1 line. Now, the, the power supplied by the first generator that becomes a P1 and the power supplied by the second generator becomes a P2. I think the first generator will be supplying a more amount of power, the second generator will be supplying a less amount of power. The pre frequency also will be that to the upward line. But in parallel operator generator, we have to maintain the frequency as a constant. So, the mechanical in second generator should be decreased. That is shown with a red dotted line. That we have taken as a student. Now, this, with respect to this red dotted line, now the new operating point of the two generators will be changes to the x and y. So, with this new operating point, after decreasing the mechanical input of second generator, how supplied by the first generator becomes a P1 and power generator the second generator becomes a P2 day where the frequency is a common. In this manner, I have to maintain the frequency the generator which are connected in a yeah. The same thing we can explain by means of the phasor diagram. The excitation voltage of first generator is equal to the excitation voltage of second generator. X is also the constant. The current shared by each generator 
initially we have taken as a i1 is for i2 so the power shared by each and the transfer of k that we can calculate as vf1 into vt by x sin delta equal to vf2 vt by x sin delta equal to 3 the total power decomposed to t see here we have taken the voltage i1 equal to i2 so sum of these two current is nothing but il this is vf1 equal to ef initially so whenever we are increasing the mechanical input to the first generator the ef1 will be advances from the initial position so that the angle will be increasing from delta to delta so to maintain the total power is constant so the power taken by the second generator should be decreased so the acceleration voltage in the second generator will be retarded from the initial angle delta to delta so there is a phase difference between the ef1 and ef2 that is ab this voltage is nothing but a circulating voltage because of the circulating voltage the circulating current will be passed through the two generators which are connected in pair the circulating current will be added to the first generator so the resultant current will be increased that is i1 and angle between the vt and i1 that is theta 1 the same circulating current will be opposite the current supplied by second generator so the the net current supplied by second generator will be decreased that is i2 dash the angle is theta 2 theta 2 is nothing but angle between the vt terminal voltage and i2 now we are completing the phase diagram the phase sum of these two is nothing but load current i yeah. so from vt if you add a phase perpendicular to the i1 equal to ia2 that is j ia1 x plus j ia2 x up to the ef1 equal to ef plus the same manner from vt you have to draw a one phase perpendicular to the ia1 dash that is equal to j ia1 dash in a thermal reaction process from the tip of the vt you have to draw a vector up to the ef2 that is nothing but a j ia2 so from this phase diagram we can clearly understand that as the mechanical input is increased the current supplied by the first generator will be increased but the angle also will be where the current supplied by the second generator will be decreased angle also will be increased so which is going to affect the nothing but real power supplied by the two generator the power factor of the g1 nothing but first generator is increased where the power factor of the second generator will be decreased because data one less than the it is going to affect the power factor of the parallel operated generator if you increase the mechanical input to the one generator Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly. Or you can ask me in the comment box on YouTube channel. So that I am always welcome to answer all your questions.